The review and teardown time, this is a filament LED light bulb. What's unique about it is coming from a tier one vendor, a Philips, uh, so the bulb has all the proper UL certifications on it. Very much designed as an effects lighting product, it looks like a 350 lumens, which is not super bright. Uh, the bulb temperature is a 2200 Kelvin, that's a very golden color. Uh, let's um, tear it apart. Uh, so glass envelope, of course, they even actually take the trouble of trying to emulate the old glass blowing style where the bulbs used to be sealed off at the very top of the bulb. They got a little bulge there. Um, you can see the electronics must be hidden just down on the base here because otherwise all you can see is the filaments uh, and the guy wires which are holding them in place. So very much how incandescent light bulbs uh, used to be made. Let's um, see what's inside here. So let's look at the number of volts required to uh, power up this filament. Uh, you can see the envelope now has been smashed and uh, I've connected two probes to the uh, filaments. They're all in uh, parallel. Right now we're at the lowest setting, running about 70 volts, 68 volts. And if I increase the intensity, uh, it runs up to about 70, 75 volts. Um, and obviously considerably higher current. So a real confirmation there's a significant number of LEDs here uh, in series. So it's pretty obvious that they just repurposed uh, an old incandescent LED light bulb line because the shape here is very reminiscent of it. Uh, you can see electronics just hiding there in this little base. There's obviously not a lot of room. So that'll be the next challenge here is to uh, I guess smash a bit more of the glass envelope uh, and extract that little circuit board sitting below. Uh, so obviously now the uh, base is here and uh, there's the power supply. It, it looks like they've wrapped the circuit board in sort of a rubber barrier so it doesn't touch the edges of this uh, case here. Let's uh, take this off and uh, take some photographs of the circuit board both sides and see if we can sort it down further. Uh, okay, so it looks like there's actually a controller circuit board here. There's some parts on it. It looks like both sides even. And then it's pushed through this circuit board and soldered on this side. Uh, and then of course we have parts uh, on both. So let's uh, take a look at this circuit board here. So here's the bottom of the circuit board, and you can see a UL marking there, E199273. And you can go into a UL database, and it tells me it's the Leechek uh, Electronics Company, and there's the web page of the, uh, the firm. I, I was doing this because I was trying to figure out whether or not Philips designed this bulb or not, and it's hard to say because I couldn't find any Philips markings on uh, uh, any of these actual circuit boards. But, uh, of course, it wouldn't be unusual for Philips to uh, contract all their manufacturing out into China. So on this assembly you can see two uh, slot 23s, one marked 5CT, the other one marked 6B. And to sort that down you can use those surface mount codes uh, and cross-reference them. There's at least uh, three or four sources on the web that are quite good. I'm using the SMD code book. Uh, I'll show the link in my video description as to where you can find it. Uh, someone has taken a tremendous amount of uh, trouble to uh, compile a large listing of all of the uh, components. And for example if I type in 5CT uh, it goes into a listing here, it says it's a BC80740, Phillips semiconductor, slot 23. Uh, and this is a transistor, and the same thing with the 6B. I think we're going to find that to be a FET, if I recall correctly. Let's just try this out. Uh, 6B, uh, sure enough, coming in N-channel FET. So this is going to help us uh, decode what we're looking at in terms of this assembly. So now I'm interested in doing just a little bit of uh, partial schematic uh, construction, see how this thing was built. You can see it's a really small circuit board if you try to chase it around with the multimeter it goes across your table. As a bit of a tip, sometimes you can just use a ball of plaster scene and uh, you can push it down uh, in. And of course what ha happens then is it's very easy to probe around the board because of course it's, it's fixed in place. Um, you'll have to clean the board off of course if you're uh, putting it back in service, but uh, in terms of reverse engineering, a little chunk of uh, putty like this can be very handy. So this is typical when you reverse engineer the uh, circuit diagram of any old circuit board. You end up with a sort of half physical, half uh, schematic representation, but then you have to noodle it down. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of PNP transistors. They're basically in parallel, so I presume that they're trying to increase the current carrying capabilities. There's a, a capacitor diode and a FET, and it looks like it's a timing circuit essentially. It charges and discharges, though so controls these two uh, devices. I suspect this little circuit board must be the uh, element which is controlling the uh, brightness of the bulb. Coming back to the main board, uh, let's see what we can see. Uh, there will be a fuse here somewhere because this is a, a UL approved bulb. Uh, here it is coming out with the uh, the black wire. And uh, you can see uh, a couple of um, capacitors here. And there's going to be an inductor right next to this uh, capacitor. That's the conductive emissions filter so the bulb doesn't push electric noise back into the line. Uh, this capacitor here is a smoothing capacitor, probably on the filament side. We have a transformer here. 
Uh, and then here's a, a larger power transistor. That little controller circuit board that was sitting here, what would happen if it was controlling this transistor, of course, would control the uh, the transformer in terms of dumping power in and to the uh, filaments. On the back side, uh, just a small number of discrete components. Now, interestingly enough, this bulb uh, doesn't have any sort of sophisticated integrated circuit. It's just a collection of uh, RLCs, simple diodes, and transistors. Um, but it is a packaging marvel. There's a lot of circuitry sitting in a very small volumetric space. The bulb claims to be dimmable, and it's wonderfully dimmable. In fact, you can uh, push it down to a very low mode here, and um, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's, it's a really lovely uh, sort of glowing uh, light uh, coming from the bulb. And, uh, and of course, you want the full uh, intensity. It, uh, it scales up nicely. Uh, this is definitely an old style dimmer. So um, looks like this is a really nice bulb in terms of its light quality and uh, its dimmability. So this is the flicker test light bulb shining upon a solar cell, which uh, of course uh, generates electricity. And let's just reposition the camera here. and We take a look at the output in the oscilloscope. So this is the output of the solar cell, it's uh, DC coupled, and here's the ground here, and you can see a little bit of a waveform here, and uh, what we can do is put the scope into an AC coupled mode, and uh, zoom into that to see if there is any component, it's, it's very small, uh, so this really wouldn't be perceived by the uh, human eye. And you can see a bit of fuzz here, and it's actually the switching frequency, if you uh, measure the peak to peak frequency comes in around about 140 kilohertz. Uh, which is, of course, again, well beyond hum human perception. So uh, this bulb, uh, amazingly, has just uh, just great uh, light output in terms of flicker. Uh, what a nice little feature is some really beautiful pad printing with the Philips logo in gold, and, and then the information on the uh, ratings of the bulb and uh, where you can use it, and, of course, the UL listing mark. So uh, really attractive manufacturing on this bulb. Uh, very, very pretty.